Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain. I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting. So we are going to do the second fire on our daisies today. And um, we're going to do a wash. Now, I know we haven't done a wash on here before. And I wanted to show you what a wash can be. Um, this is one that I did. I probably only been painting about three or four years. And um, this is the wash that I did. And it's a Violet of Iron wash. Um, my first teacher um, was uh, Gladys Bug, and she washed everything. <laughs> and so I learned to wash. And you can see here, because the Violet of Iron is still on these lower leaves and petals and things, how they're really shaded. And then where I pulled off the Violet of Iron, you see how everything really pops. So we're going to do something similar with our daisies. I think it'll make it easier to get some shading on them, especially since um, since they're they're white, and um, that'll be something that I think you'll uh, enjoy. So I'm going to tilt you down so we can get started. So hopefully you can see this is this is the first coat on the daisies that I have done, and I, it came out a little strange. I have a lot of real deep um, background up here, and then it just stops. And obviously, I didn't want that. So I think the wash will also help to correct that. So we're going to start with, uh, to do a wash, you start with a large brush. This is a three-quarter inch brush. And um, of course, you check it, make sure it's clean. And we're going to use blue-black. Now, you, if you remember, I was saying that um, even though you might be a beginner painter, um, I, you still need to get um, a lot of different colors to use. And the more colors you have, I think the better painter you can become because you look at something after a while and you can tell exactly what color it needs. So for this, we're going to do a blue-black wash. And we're going to just start and put it over everything. And you go, oh my God, what's she doing? Well, I'm doing this because the blue-black wash will allow us to pull out the colors that we want. And it will also give us shadows where we want them. So now you can see I've got a lot of lines on there right now. I'm going to go back with a better brush and um, smooth it. But right now I'm just interested in getting the paint on here. And I'm going all the way around. Except down in this area, I'm going to do it around the edges and then I'm going to feather it because that's where our light was coming in and I don't want to lose that. And I know I'm painting the edges and I've always said wait till the end to paint the edges, but this will be easy enough to touch up if you smear it and smudge it. So I, and I've done it several times and haven't had a problem, so I just do it. I just painted. Now I'm putting a little more up in here because that's where we said we had that line. I just really didn't like that line, so I'm putting that in there. Okay. All right. So this is the background that I've got there. Okay. That's my wash. I'm going to clean my brush. Okay, so now I've taken my, this is my quill brush. And I'm going through now and I'm going to soften the edges of this. And as we've done in the past, I'm just going to, as you can see, I'm wiping it on my towel and I'm just trying to, or on my yeah, paper towel, and I'm just trying to, down here, I don't want to get in, this into the um, wash. And so I'm kind of pulling it up and I'm, I'm smoothing it out. This is probably the quickest way I know to do a wash. To show you online. Oops, got a hair there. Yuck. So, oh, let me turn it so you can see it. So I'm trying to just gently go through and do this wash. Now, obviously, in an hour, a half an hour or so, it's hard to get it perfect. So you can play with it on your own and really work on getting the wash just the way you want it, nice and smooth. But um, this is a, a very good way of um, kind of helping out that background 
and uh, also with white daisies you'll see they'll really pop and I'm just going around still and kind of smoothing okay then down here I had ivory originally and I'm going to put a little more ivory down in there because it'll make it easier to pull into the blue oops got a little too much oil on there and um, it'll keep the color kind of subtle down there see how easy that makes it you can easily more easily blend if you have more than one color down there let's just keep doing that there we go okay so you kind of get the idea and I want to bring more blue and I don't want to just leave it like that so I'm going to bring a little blue down into here and down into here And this will give me a little bit of background. Uh, I have a website where I have a lot of free printables. I don't know if you've taken advantage of those. Um, but if not, uh, there's a lot of free stuff on there. There's even a, a free first uh, wild rose kind of um, um, plate that you can do, a tea towel that you can do. And um, the study is completely free for beginners. So if you want to go on there and get that study and then practice it and uh, try your luck, um, that's one way to do it. The hardest thing, I think, for a beginner is finding someone who has a kiln that can fire for you because, um, um, you know, not everybody has a kiln. And I think that prevents people from china painting. Okay, so I've played enough with this now. There's a lot more I could do, but you can see how I'm just trying to, I'm trying to leave not a lot of space down here and obviously I'll go through and clean it up. I've got a second fire done now. I'll show you how it ended up. See, I, oops, there. I did leave a little bit of light down there. And don't forget, you probably still have another fire on this, so it'll be an opportunity for you to um, go through and add a little more depth if you want. But this just gives you an idea of what I would do on the, this fire. And I'm just going to put a little more depth up in here. So you look at it as if you've already painted it, even though you haven't. And you pretend you've kind of already done this. And what you're going to do is you're going to go in and make sure you have the depth where you need it, where you want it. And then um, as you pull out the flower, you'll see it's, it's truly amazing what happens with the wash. Okay, so here we go. All right, so now I'm going to get my brush I want to use for the wash. I like this little brush. You could use a number four. And um, I like this one because it has a rounded tip. And for daisies, it seems to work just great. I'm going to start with my main daisy, and I'm going to pull from the middle out. And from the middle out. Do you see how that wash just, now you could also do from the outside in. These are my ones that flip down, so I'm doing them from the middle out, but you could also do from the outside in. You could do just the top half. Let me just hold that so you can see it here. If you do it from the outside in, you're going to, um, oh, here I have to do it from the inside out. Although that one's going to be a full one. I forgot. Forget this is the one on top. Okay. So you're going to do it from the inside out, inside out, inside out. If you do it from the outside in, you pull a little bit of this color towards the center, and that also can be very useful. Yeah, I might balance it against me because today I have the shakes a little bit and I don't want to. Then you're going to clean out the center. So can you see? Now that one, it's obvious. There's, you know, it, it's it's the top one. It's got all the color. Then I take my, um, my number 10 
and I just lightly hit the background on this because when you pull like that after you've cleaned your brush in turpentine or, or uh, mineral spirits real well and you pull out, a lot of times you leave this nasty edge of paint and you don't want that. So you want to go over it just lightly and kind of pull that so that it's not going to be there. Sometimes if you don't clean your brush real well too, it will bleed, meaning it just, as you do it, the paint kind of oozes out into the background. You can catch it if you have a brush on hand very easily. Oops. Okay. And now I'm going to do some of these background ones. Now this is what's really cool. As you get closer to where they go into the background, yeah, I better do these this way. See, I could leave it like that and it would look like it really went into the background. I don't want it to be quite that dramatic. This one, I'm just gonna do a half of it. Can you see there? I'll move over a little. I'm just pulling out a little bit and letting it fade into the background. I'm going to turn this one around. I'm going to do it this way. There we go. Okay, so there you can see how you can really make it fade into the background. Then you're going to clean out your center. But a wash can really help if you're trying to get some depth and you're also trying to um, make things pop. And you, if you do it, I think, especially if you're a beginner, I think you'll be amazed at, you'll go, oh, I didn't know I could get that kind of color in there. It just, you wouldn't expect it. Then again, I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to kind of lightly go over the edges just to make sure that I don't leave any of that gunk. Okay. And then I have one more over here. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to start with this one. I think I'm going to see if I wiped out just part of that center section, what it does. Also, you can... You can play with it. You can just pull it down if you want. Okay, I'm going to clean out my brush again. And I'm just going back and I'm going to pull from the outside in over here, I think. I don't know. Those of you that have done it, would you do it from the outside in or inside out? Um, I find when I do it from the outside in, I get a big buildup in the center. I don't necessarily like that. If I do it from the inside out, I don't often get that, but what do you do when you do the wipeouts? Do you do it from the outside in or the inside out? Okay, here, here. And you have to kind of press and lift if you're going towards the center. Here. And then that way, that dark will stay in the center of your flower, if that's what you want. Okay, I'm gonna have one right here that's kind of dark. I'm just gonna do the edge of it. Oh, probably even shouldn't have done that. Let me just pull the color back. That's why you keep your big brush handy. You can pull the color back. Okay. And I'll clean out a little more of the center here. And over on this side, I don't know if you can see, but right here, I've got a little bit too much color in there, so I'm just gonna take my big brush, which I haven't cleaned, by the way, in a while, and I'm just gonna pull that color into the center there, okay? All right, 
So that's how I would pull out my daisies and give myself some background and some color there. And it makes it a lot easier, I think, if you're a beginner to do things that way than to try to put an, another coat on. Um, and you don't have to use the black blue wash. Um, the only reason I used it is because I used banding blue on my first fire. And like I said, the banding blue can be a little, it can, for some reason it just sort of stopped and I didn't realize it until I got this far along. And then you can smooth out that background a little bit more. Down here, I think I need to add just a little bit more so that it, it blends, it doesn't just stop. Okay. All right. And then we're doing the cross hatch. Okay, so now I'm going to take, I played with this a while and I realized that I probably needed to use, what size brush is this? I don't know. Three-eighths. Hmm, never heard of that. Okay, three-eighths inch. Didn't realize I had it. And I'm going to start with my leaves. I'm going to kind of do the same thing. I'm going to decide my light's coming kind of this way across the plate. Um, and so I'm going to start and just kind of pull the light on and pull the wash off the leaves to give my leaves a little bit of color. Just here and there. Up here I'm going to do it. Can you see how I'm doing that? It probably looks, you probably go, oh my God, what's she doing? But I'm just pulling a little bit of color off because then I'm going to put more color back on. But in the meantime, I'm pulling off the highlight because if I don't keep have a highlight now, I'm not going to have it later. And I know it looks a little drastic right now because it's it's so much of a contrast. But um, you'll see it it will change when we put the other color back there. I think there's yeah there's a there is one here. Okay, there's one here, and there's a couple leaves down here. Okay. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm out of. Gotta remember to stay in. Okay, and now I'm going to get, oh, I hid my little brush. Here it is. I'm going to get my little brush. This is a quarter inch, and I'm going to um, take some color and put it back in on these, um, these leaves. Um, I am going to use a, a brown green. You could use your gold green if you still have, oops, still have it. And I'm just going to define those edges of the leaves and try to get a little color into the middle of the leaf. Okay, and where one leaf goes under another, you're going to want to make sure that you have that color there. Now remember, I use the mum leaves, the daisy mum leaves, as my choice of leaf. And they're very roughly, they go in and out and in and out a lot. I thought that was leaf, but it's not. Turns out that that was background that I put there. Okay. And then you can kind of make sure you've pulled all the background off. So you see how I'm working on my leaves now. Um, this one over here, I'm using shading green now. I switched to shading green because it's a little darker on this side. Mix it with a little brown green. And I'm just going to do the edges. Edge of this leaf here. Let's come here. 
Come here, paint. Okay. And you're going to put a little bit on the end of the leaf and the side of the leaf. And up at the top, I'm going to try to pull it through the leaf like this. And a little bit up in here. I'm using a real flat stroke. These are a little more complicated than some of the other things we've done with beginners. So, um, because the leaves are kind of weird. They're really bumpy and lumpy. Um, another way that you can go through and kind of define the leaf so it's easier for you is take your eraser, if you have a blunt eraser like this, and sort of draw the outline of the leaf just a little, like that. That's this leaf that I drew. And then I'm just going to pull some of the color in and around it. And that'll help me remember what the leaf looked like, because as you put this wash on, a lot of the color disappears, and it's hard to tell what your leaf originally looked like. Okay, and I'm just going to add a little dark here and there. And the same thing here. I'm going to use the eraser and just kind of do a little bit of the sculpting around the edges so that I remember where they were. And that's right here is where I did that. And then I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to, and that'll help you kind of get a handle on where that background got in your way. And pull it in. There we go. And then brush the background so you don't have that line. Okay. And this guy almost looks like he flipped. So I'm going to make him flip a little there. And I'll make this more of a, yeah, that's better. The other thing you can do is you can bring your background in like this. And then over here, I'm going to also want to um, define this. This guy's on top. So I'm going to go through and just define him. Just a little bit so I can find them a little easier. And then I'm going to pull them in. And then I'm going to pull that out so that it's out of the way there. And this is another one I think that folded over. So I'm going to bring a little depth up in here. There we go. Okay. Now, the final thing I'm going to do on my leaves for this fire me, 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 is I'm going to take my liner, my shading green. Yeah, I'm, uh, and I'm just going to make sure that the little veins that are in that are, are there because they're not always showing up. I'm just putting in a dark green a little closer to the flowers and finishing out the base of the leaves. And then the, um, so I put my veins back in by just using my, my, uh, my liner, like here, here, and I'm just going to go back and make sure that I didn't cover over any of the ends of these, there, a couple of them got mixed in with the color of the leaves and I didn't want that. So I'm going to pull them out again. And I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup. Oh. Oh, shoot. I must have had turpentine on there and not the other. So here, let's go. And I don't know if you can what you can see very easily on there. Um, let me get some. There we go. So I um, where was I here? Okay. 
Okay, so I'm gonna, I would do this on this spire, and I would go in and pull out a little more of the background and play with it. I just don't have, there we go. The, the edges aren't, you can see I got into the edges, so I'm gonna have to go back and smooth them, and that'll be the last thing I do before I put it in the kiln, is add the color back to the edges. I'm going to take my fine liner, and I'm also going to make sure that these These uh, petals have been separated again, in case I missed a couple, or in case I left too much of the color on there. Like here, this is a real good example. You see how those three have kind of blended back together again? I'm gonna separate them by using um, the blue on here. You could use brown. I guess brown might be better because it is kind of closer to the flower. And then I'm going to take my rich brown and kind of go around the edges. Oops, come here, you. And then I'm just going to do that little button in the middle. Just a little better. Oh, how am I holding that there? There, that's the way it is. Now, I on this one, I don't have any of the little... And this one I have flowery things hanging over the sides. I can do that on here. I'm going to put one right here. I'm going to put in my stems for my little flowery guys. Maybe just two. And because we have the background on here, I should be able to just wipe out the leaves. I mean the petals. Oh. Did you see how I did that up here? I just wiped out my petals right there. And here too, if you want to put little Oops, I guess these you really need to pull from the top down. And then you can put a little bit of a base on them if you want to. I'm having trouble seeing. Yeah, you can see what I'm doing. And then right there, and just put a little base on them. And then I would take my blue and go back in. Oops, got to put a little oil on there. And I would pull from the center out just as kind of, oops. It's a little heavy-handed, just to kind of separate those little guys. Same thing here. And then you can go back in if it's a little heavy and just fix it up. You can put little leaves on those. Um, almost like a shadow leaf, you're not going to, you're not really going to do anything too substantial when they're that little you can just put a little leaf on it, maybe one up here. You don't have to put leaves on these, you know, it just, it's up to you, your personal preference. Um, hang on, I've got, I always am getting turpentine on here, okay. So then you, the last thing you're going to do is, I wanted to put a little, you're right, this is kind of monochrome. And uh, I always put a little yellow red in the center on the wash side on the kind of, to give it a little oomph. Even when I do it with the, oops, not quite that much, but even when I do it with these strange colors like this, I just wanted something different. I every time I see daisies, I see them. They're either turquoise, or they're they've got a turquoise background, or they've got a green background. Turquoise or green, turquoise or green. And I just whoa, have gotten to the point where I think, oh dear. So I've got my my flowers on that side, and then I'm just going to take and put. I wanted a couple of these little guys over on this side. Balance it. I'm a balance person. And I, I will take my pen 
and I will, uh, or my liner, and I will also go around the edges of the leaves to give them a little bit of definition. I like that. Um, my dad always did that. My dad was a china painter. My mom was a china painter. My dad was a commercial artist, and he used a lot of line drawing. And um, I like to kind of define the edge of the leaf a little bit. Not a lot, you know, just like here. Let me show you. I'll show you the, these guys close up. Oops. I'm not. <laughs> so that's how I put the, the lines on. I just just outline, not the whole leaf, but a little bit, just enough to give it a little bit of, maybe help it stand out. And like this guy here, I would do a little here. Also, it shapes the leaf. If you've lost the shape of the leaf, this is a good way to get it back. And then if it's a little too prominent, you can always take and knock it back with your brush. So that's kind of what I do. All right, so that's what I have on this fire. And um, I've already done a second fire. You know, I work a couple plates together. And I've already done a second fire on this one. So I painted it like that, and then I fired it. And this is how this one came out. Looks a lot lighter, doesn't it? I was surprised. This one seems a little darker. This one seems a little lighter. And I like the way that the, um, the yellow or the uh, ivory kind of peeks through down in here. And with this one, I put a, a few more of these little guys over here and a couple over there. But you can do whatever you want on your. All right. Well, I think we're pretty much done. I hope that what we've done today has helped you. Um, you're going to work on your, your second fire and uh, let me know what it looks like. And then next week, and this is, you know, if you're happy, a lot of people would be happy with this and say, oh, yeah, that's dark enough. I like it a little darker. So I actually, I've been working on this like crazy. This is my final fire. And my final fire, I actually got more depth around the edges. I wanted it to have kind of a, a dark look to it, you know. Um, and so um, I'm going to put it with a couple other pieces I have and make myself a luncheon set. Okay, that's the second fire on our daisies. And uh, next time we will do the third fire. So I hope you will join me then. I hope you enjoyed the program. And I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.